This is counterintuitive. Yes, to me. but so why is the center in quadrant four? The center is not. The center is here. These are the points that will help me draw my box. Yes, but why is the center in quadrant four? Because it's, it's positive, three, positive, positive, positive and negative. Three, negative two. Oh, but it's positive three it's on the posi y. Positive three y going up negative I two. Two negative yes. three. Oh. Um. <laughs> Cut. Thank you. I mixed up my X and Y, Kathy, didn't I? Can, Wait, can we change the problem? Please change the problem. Please. Change the problem. <laughs> please. All right. I can't do this on a test, but for this purpose, minus, minus two, I mean, so if I make this minus, plus yeah, two yeah, and this okay. minus three, <laughs> oh. Kathleen, thank you very much. Okay? Oh, that's going on YouTube. Oh that's God. going on YouTube. That it doesn't matter that much because everyone knew what it meant. That just means... Now everyone in the world will know I have very smart students. And, oh, and There's going to be one super be genius watching Pardon? us. The nine is negative. The nine is negative. Okay, thank you. It's just going to be like... Watching us? Like, no, no, I'm just going to Oh my god. I saw that before. I know what he's doing. I'd like to say for the world that I have a sinus infection. Um, alright, so... Okay. And now we... That's why he oh, made a mistake. You're making your box orange too? I did that. Okay, now... Oh, we should be BFFs. Um... This is my pen. Else. Now, for life. BFF. Yeah, BFF. No way. Best friend for life. Stan knowing you for life. BFF L. Okay, now, um, when I'm drawing my air, my lines, they have to go across BFF the diagonal. L. Guys, if you've drawn this correctly, then your lines will be straight. Your lines will go through the center point that you found as <laughs> Look well. Look at your box. Yeah. <laughs> Fun of his box? No. Never. Really? I'd be okay with it. Now, here's the. God, my box is not very straight. Um, okay. So, my. The next thing I did when it was centered at the origin was I found the x intercepts, or the y intercepts in that case. Actually, in this case, it's y dominance, so it would be the y intercepts. Um, in this case, we don't go to the y-axis. This point here above uh, the center, 3 comma 4, is the lowest point of my top wing. Guys, the microphone's going to pick all that up. You have to go? Okay, you're passing it off. Thank you, Ramsey. Ramsey, stop doing that. Okay. And now, the reason why I want you to have the lines in is I want to see on your graph how shallow or how narrow this is. So you have got to be asymptotically following. Are you serious? <laughs> your dotted lines to finish your graph. Okay, now what do we figure out for C? C is A squared plus B squared. 13.1. We heard. Okay, so from the center now. Okay, shh, guys. So from. This point, which we said was 3, negative 2. Okay, now we have to go up 13. Thank you, Alma. Um, now we have to go up 13 from here, 13.1 from here, so that's going to be up to around 11. I'm just going to label this point 3, 11.1, or actually 3, negative 2 plus 6 root 5. And then I have to go down about third, the same distance, and rather than, I'm just going to label it. 3 comma negative 2 minus 6 root 5. And these are my foci. Aren't too bad. OK, any questions on that? Yeah, this is so much problem. stuff. Thank you, yes. All right, we got one more to do, which is the starting from standard form. So I want to show you some, algebra, some general form. So I want to show you some possible algebra mistakes you can trip over. Why do you keep mixing those two up? I just don't like terms, apparently. Um, okay. Don't like terminology. They don't like you. They really don't. Oh, All right, so any, any questions on this? Okay, you guys can shift it. Make sure your the bottoms and tops of your wings shift, are clearly shift, here. Shift. I've got to like my drawing here. Make sure the bottoms and tops of your wings are clearly in the center of the sides of your rectangle when it's not centered on the origin. And make sure you follow these dotted lines to show me you know the shallowness or depth of your... Real question. Do I ever know? Here's hoping. Mr. Right. Belova? Yes. When do the when does the point touch the dotted line? The, yeah, the the arrows. Short answer is never, but when you get to right. calculus at the yeah. end of this year, 
Um, we start talking about limits. They the get limits. infinitely closer, but never touch. But never clip touch, yeah. No, but and when we get to the, the limit is the tr basically sort of the trend of a function. It's where it's headed, regardless of whether it's getting there or not. But people so, think that they hit zero, right? Like, science is now, or not science. Didn't you say something about mathematicians thinking that... Well, there's, there's, there's a difference zero. between... Um, now, when you, when you get to calculus, you can talk about what happens at infinity. So that's where you can start talking about that. Wait, um, so what happens at infinity? Yeah, we'll get to that later. What no? do you mean by, by paradox? That's a great question, and we'll get to that. Um, the other piece to it is sometimes these model things in the real world. Like, have you guys ever seen astigmatoids used to model, like, radioactive decay, half-life examples? Oh, yeah. Oh! AP chem! Okay. Well, the fact Woo! is, in half-life, the individual Baking. atoms really are changing, and at some point you do run out of atoms. It takes a long time, but you do. It doesn't actually go on. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is one last atom that decays, and then you're done. But... An asymptote is a good model for getting close to the right answer. So the asymptote goes on forever mathematically. The substance does not continue to decay into half atoms and quarter atoms and eighths of an atoms. Does that make sense? AKA so sometimes quarks. we're using so sometimes Ramsey yeah. we're using this to describe something a little bit inaccurately, but it's close enough. Um, Every time you say half life, I can't help but think of the video game. Yes. <laughs> Seconded. It really didn't impress me that much. I enjoyed it, but. I didn't immediately want to go, ooh, I'm going to go play Counter-Strike or whatever it was. I was like, yeah, that's all right. Counter-Strike is good. Yeah. Okay, minus 24. I'll keep that in mind. All right. Now, in ge if you get something in general form, you know where this is going towards lots of completing the square. Um, is that 89 or 4? 250. 49. Wow. Big wow. numbers now. Now, they'll resolve into fairly nice numbers. Um... A couple things you can do. If you see something positive with an x squared and negative with a y squared, what shape should you start to anticipate graphically? What's gonna call it? A hyperbola. If this was a 4x squared and a plus 25y squared, what would you think you were probably about a to graph? A circle thing. An ellipse. Oval. oval. Yes, an ellipse. Well, it has to be a hyperbola because that's the less. Because you're gonna wind up with, for all your ellipses, you wind up with a positive x squared and a positive y squared. For your hyperbolas, you always have to wind up with one of these. If being you knew that x is positive, it's going to be an x dominant hyperbola. That can actually change. You mm -hmm. suck. Because wait a um, minute, well, th that's a great point. I was about to ask that next. I was going to make a trick question actually. Haha! -ha, I fell for it. <laughs> if you see positive x squared and negative y squared, you might think, oh, it's going to be an x dominant hyperbola. But the thing is, when we're done completing the square, what if we have a negative number over here? Then we'd have to multiply everything by negative one. And then you'd wind up with a sign switching over here. <laughs> I sprung the trap before it was laid. You did. Okay, so 4x <laughs> squared minus not 24x really. minus 25y squared plus 250y equals 489. But since there's a positive on the right side. Ah, uh, maybe. We'll see. Oh, come on. All right, so now here is, yeah, it'll be positive because all we're going to do is okay. add to this side. Um, I take out the 4, and I'm left with x squared minus 6x, correct? Because completing the square, which we're going to do next, only works when you, um, when you have a 1 coefficient in front of the x squared. What do I take out of... 25. I take out positive or negative? Um, negative. I have to take out... Here's the, a big, big mistake I see Oh, positive. Lot. I take out t negative 25 because I need this to be positive 1y squared uh. for completing the square to work. Now, when I factor negative 25 out of positive 250, you get negative. I have minus 10y. 